Welcome back to the channel, all my beautiful apes. My name is Tyler. So in this video, we are going over a very strong due diligence piece about Amazon potentially working with Citadel to naked short sell AMC stock to potentially buy AMC as a business. Now, we all know Amazon has a streaming platform, Amazon Prime. They would love to knock out AMC by acquiring the company. So this whole theory does make a lot of sense. But like I said, we're going over this very strong due diligence piece that basically puts all the pieces to this puzzle together in a very clear and precise way now at the end of this video we are going to be going over what a potential buyout for amc stock could look like and what to expect so that is also very important but before we get into this video just keep in mind a lot of this information beyond this due diligence piece is going to be hard to prove if we will ever be able to prove some of this information only time will tell but make sure you guys have your tin foil hats on because this is going to get very tin foil like but very interesting at the same time at the same time as you guys are doing that, drop that like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell so you guys will be notified every time a new video is posted. Now, tinfoil hat check. Let's get into this video. So... This does say Amazon, Bain Capital, and Capital bust out the competition. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this due diligence piece today, a couple videos on this, so I am only here to further spread this information and to really provide my input on the situation as well as the whole buyout theory because I don't really think a lot of apes are fully aware of what could happen with this. It is a good thing, but also a bad thing at the same time. Now, let's get into this article. So what is a bust out? In a bust out scheme, the identity and credit line of a business are used to obtain loans and goods with no intention of repayment. In some instances, businesses are created for this sole purpose. In others, legitimate businesses are acquired and used for the fraud. Now it says, in this post, I will go over what I believe is a scheme set out by Amazon to capture and kill companies for market share. The scheme involves Amazon identifying a target, and with the help of its gang members, Citadel and Bain Capital, it busts out the target by using it to capture and kill other co competitors in the process. In this story, I will be talking about Citadel, Amazon, Bain Capital, but you could easily substitute any market maker for Citadel, any company for Amazon, Microsoft, Netflix, etc., and any private equity firm for Bain Apollo. I am simply using these three because they were the parties I have looked at. I guess you could go... You could say, if you go longer for shit in a sewer, you're going to find it, and the finance and business world seems to be a pretty big sewer. In the beginning, Amazon acquired the competition legitimately. Amazon has been known for capturing market share of just about every sector of the retail space and now has its eyes set on movies and maybe at one point even wanted to get into the gaming sector. Amazon started relatively small and set its sights on an easy target, books. But Bezos wasn't actually interested in just books. He wanted to create a company that was so big and so dependent on retailers that retailer, retailers were dependent on it. Well, in the early 2000s, around the time Amazon was becoming known for selling a little more than just books, it also sold, sold toys for Toys R Us and had a few other things on the site. Amazon wanted to branch out further. There were other companies that were already successful in the e-commerce world. So instead of starting from the ground up and, t and taking down their competition, Amazon simply acquired the competition. Some notable acquisitions include Wazibi and Zappos. Wazibi was an awesome ad adversary. They had domains and successful businesses such as diapers.com, yo-yo, and wag.com. The acquisition cost the cost Amazon $545 million in 2010. It wasn't cheap, but it was easier and likely cheaper than taking on their competition head on. Now, Zappos. In 2009, Amazon acquired Zappos for $1.2 billion. Again, not cheap. And to add further injury to insult, Amazon couldn't kill Zappos because the deal left the CEO of Zappos in place and allowed it to operate independently. Take a look for yourself. And has a couple of links. Also, I will make sure to link this down below in the description. Now, okay, shifting gears a little. Let's take a look at another company, Bain Capital. Bain Capital was started and run by a little-known figure, figure, Mitt Romney. Heard of him? If you haven't, here is an excerpt from an article written by Rolling Stone when Romney ran for president back in 2012. And I know we all know 
who Mitt Romney is. Now, let's just read this very quick as well. In quotes, this is from Mitt Romney. And this is where we get to the hypocrisy at the heart of Mitt Romney. Everyone knows that he is fantastically rich, having scored great success, and the legend goes as a turnaround specialist, a shrewd financial operator who revived more bound companies as a high-priced consultant for a storied Wall Street private equity firm. But what most voters don't know is that the way Mitt Romney actually made his fortune by borrowing vast sums of money that other people were forced to pay back, this is a plain stark reality that has somehow eluded America's top political journalists for two consecutive pre presidential campaigns. Mitt Romney is one of the greatest and most irresponsible debt creators of all time. In the past few decades, in fact, Romney has piled more debt onto more unsuspecting companies, written more gigantic checks than than other people have to cover, than perhaps all but a handful of people on planet Earth. Instead of building new companies from the ground up, we took out massive bank loans and used them to acquire existing firms, liquidating every asset in sight and leaving the target companies holding the note. Huh, kind, kind of sounds like a bust out. Shit, that is a bust out. Now, it says, uh, goes out to say, this is very important, so we're going to go over this. It says, but Mitt liked to make money, and he soon discovered a new way to make it, a less honest but faster and more lucrative way. Bain Capital would acquire failing businesses, then bust them out. In fact, Bain would use the business itself as collateral for the loan to buy the business. Yeah, use the business own credit to buy the business. This process is known as a leveraged buyout, LBO. Once Bain had control of the business, often they would install their own board members and executives. They would then distribute massive bonuses to executives that the failing business could not afford. Sometimes Bain would use the business credit to purchase com competitors as they did with Toys R Us and FAO Schwartz, but we will get to that in a bit. KB Toys, basically talking about the LBO situation and what Bain Capital has done. Now, Toys R Us, same thing, talking about how Bain Capital uh, basically bought the company for, let's see, uh, that made the company with $11.2 in sales, less nimble and able to navigate the business and financial world. So for multi-billions of dollars, it does not say, ex uh, yep, $5 billion requiring 97% true profits to the service interest on that debt. So they bought that for $5 billion. We're going to skip down to Amazon and what role they do play. So it says, Papa's got a brand new bag. This is where I believe Amazon discovered a new, cheaper, and far more effective way to kill its competition. Up to this point, Amazon had been buying up and swallowing their competition. This was effective, but very expensive. What if, and hear me out, what if Amazon could use a company like Bank Capital to do a takeover of the company that had a massive market share that Amazon would like to capture, then have Bank Capital bust out the company using said company to buy up any and all competitors, both online and traditional retail, then declare the company bankrupt, taking down all the competition with it. It is very clear that Amazon has been doing this with retail and other segments since basically its beginnings of a company. Company, squeezing out all of the competition. This is really where this due diligence piece starts to make a lot of sense. Now, let's continue on. But there is a problem. How do you get bank capital to take over a publicly traded company? Hostile takeover, sure, but that would be expensive. Buying all the stock at the market would not only be costly, but also backfire when shareholders refuse to sell. Well, what, what could you do to lower the price in some way that would make it possible to take over the company? How could this be done? As we all know, short selling on its own can't really affect the price of a share, but it benefits when the share price declines. Well, what if you're not truly in interested in shorting a company to make money off the share price decline, there must be a way to lower a company's share price by increasing the supply of shares on the market, share dilution. That's where we get into naked short selling. Now, Amazon and Bain Capital are not capable of diluting shares of any company they do not control. So how could they do this to the competition? They need a partner, someone who has all access to a share printing machine, but who do we know that has that has access to one of these. Citadel. 
Citadel can create and sell fake shares, driving the share price of a targeted company to the point of either being delisted or bankrupt or both. When this happens, Citadel keeps all the money it makes from the short sell, never having to cover their shorts. I think by now you all understand how this works, so I will leave this here. Now they need a plan. The plan. Identify a target. Two, install and acquire inside man on the board of the company, maybe CEO slash CFO. Three, spread rumors about the target through the media, the liars. Four, create a class action lawsuit against the company. Five, fire up the printers and flood the market with fake shares of the company, driving share price through the floor, which has been happening for a very long time. And we have proven this through due diligence piece after due diligence piece. Six, company either declares bankruptcy or is delisted from the exchange. Seven, perform a leverage buyout of the company. Company, bust it out, acquires another competition to capture and kill. Then when the company is so saddled with debt, it can no longer stand, kill the company and let the wolves feed off the carcass. Job done. Amazon kills its competition. Bank Capital makes a pot makes a pile while busting out the company and Citadel keeps all the money it made from selling fake shares. It's a perfect foolproof plan, but it's not. Enter GameStop and Apes, Rut Row, you know the rest of the story up to this point. Seems to be the the only band member who is going to come out of this unscathed is Bane Capital. They get to slip through the back door, leaving the rest of the band holding the bags. So what's my conclusion? I think Citadel is just part of the machine. I believe massive companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Netflix, and others have been using this scheme since the financial crisis of 2008 to capture and kill their competition. I believe there are many moving parts in the plans and Citadel slash Kenny is just a foot soldier, not the mastermind. There may be a bigger boaster at the end of the world than we expected. Kenny may just be a hammer, bro. So that is the conclusion of this due diligence piece. I think it makes a lot of sense that Amazon would love to get their hands on AMC, but they don't want to pay the price for AMC. They don't want to put in a bid at AMC in between 25 and $30 billion. Even though they're fully capable of buying AMC at those prices, it makes a lot more sense to use their tactics, short the stock into the ground using naked short selling powered by Citadel to capture AMC at a much cheaper price. Now, how does buyouts actually work? It's pretty straightforward. They essentially put up a bid for the company. Let's say AMC, just for shits and giggles, is, is trading at a $30 billion mark cap, right? Typically, you you would put in a bid about 10 to even 20% higher than that. And depending on what does happen, shareholders of the company, typically in other stocks, you will have big shareholders that control 10, 20, 30, 40% of the overall company. But that is not the case with AMC. It comes down to the apes. But we will talk about that in just a second. So whatever company is trying to take over another company will put in a bid, like I said, about 10 to 20% higher than where the market cap currently is is now if that bid is accepted by the majority of the shareholders and they want to go through with that buyout then the stock would go to that price it wouldn't go any higher than that so i'm not sure the actual calculation let's just say they offer to buy amc for 50 dollars per share it's not going to happen but theoretically speaking here they offered to buy amc for 50 dollars if shareholders did accept that then you would see amc go to about 50 dollars per share it wouldn't go any higher than $50 per share because it was being bought out at that price. Now, in the case of AMC, we are the majority owners, so it would come down to us. We would have to vote on this proposal, and obviously, nobody is going to accept $50 per share just for imaginary sakes on their shares of AMC. So the vote you know, the process wouldn't go through specifically with AMC unless it went down to a very low price and apes were just basically giving up on the stock, then they might go for it. But I don't think that is the case by any means necessary. This is all theoretical sakes. Now, that is essentially what is going on. I do think this could be true. It may not be true. It really takes a tinfoil hat here. And I'm glad you guys can stick through all the tinfoilness. Let me know down below in the comment section, what is your opinion on this? There's been a lot of talk about this today. So I did want to address this for you guys. Now, one other brief thing about this whole buyout situation. Now, before we actually did get a price that Amazon would be willing to buy out AMC for, you would see a lot of hype going into the stock. You would see 
see the stock shoot up and probably go crazy based off of the hype, but it would likely come down just as fast as they as it did go up when they actually do put their bid in for the stock. But like I said, I don't think that is happening. So that is going to wrap up this video. Drop the like on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell, check out the four links linked down below in the description. There's two links to get totally free stock. So check that out. It is by definition free money. There's a link for the buy and sell alerts. We have been killing it over there. And over the past week alone, just in trading profits off the trades that we have made, you would have paid for that cost for over one year's time. So check that out. Also a free discord chat all about AMC stock. So with that being said, guys, I love and appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you for the support on this channel. I will see you guys later in the next video.